to see them get their answer. And I would hope that if I have a, a serious need, that people would pray for me, hoping I get my answer as well. Um, we, we don't realize how much we shoot ourselves in the foot by not praying. Now I'm not talking about as you're laying there in dreamland and you're saying, now Lord, I, somebody had something wrong with them, I don't know what it was, or they would somebody have some kind of problem tonight, would you help whoever, that, that, ain't, that ain't, just don't even speak that, that ain't doing no good. I'm talking about getting down, sitting down, standing up, getting in a corner, kneeling at a couch, something that shows your mind is really on what you're doing. And, and calling somebody's name out in prayer. The Hopper sang a song years ago, would you mention my name when you pray? You know, it, 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 it is something that I think the devil has taken that from the church. They want to shout like they did in the 40s and 50s, but they don't pray like they prayed in the 40s and 50s. You know, I remember Daddy saying when they used to go to the Church of God on Sunday afternoon, they got there at 4 o'clock. And the men went out about the tree around back and prayed till 6 o'clock. And the ladies went in the church with the windows up and prayed until 6 o'clock. A, a lot of things have changed since then. But I'm going to tell you something. It ain't necessarily always in the quantity of that prayer. But it's got to be something about the quality of it. It's got to be tuned towards heaven and towards getting an answer. If you don't believe there's people in this church that need help desperately, there's people that's got issues upon issues in their lives. They need God. We need to pray. There's some people here need chains broken off of them, situations that, that I know about and they know about. They might not think I know about it, but I know about it. But we need to see these things broken so that we can be effective in what we do for the master. Let's pray tonight. Father, we're here tonight in earnest and sincere prayer. God, with a contrite spirit and a humble heart, we come to you tonight, God, because we know that it's going to take a move of God. Uh, Lord, in this day and hour that we live in, a fast-paced society where everybody wants it in a hurry, God, we're going to have to tarry in an old-fashioned altar before the Lord uh, until we see the heavens come down. Uh, there's got to be a spirit. There's got to be a spirit of prayer that we can get into where we can tarry in the presence of the Lord uh, until he moves, until he works, uh, until we see a situation turned around. Uh, God, I know today that you're able to do it. God has not lost his power to move. Uh, but God, we do not pray like we ought to pray at all times. Uh, Lord, I pray that in this revival, we would renew in our hearts uh, a greater dedication to pray. Uh, Oh, God, to pray and to seek the face of God uh, for our children, our loved ones, our spouses, our companions, our siblings, our parents, whatever the need may be, God, that we would seek the Lord in sincere prayer. Uh, bless the service. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move. God, I'm thirsty. Pour out the Holy Ghost. I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. I'm hungry for a mighty move. 
God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. Oh, you, you are, are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. And you are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. And you are God alone. You are God alone, you are God alone, from before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone. That's what you are. You are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone, you're unchangeable, unshakable. Before time begins, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone, you are God alone, from before time begins, you are on your throne. Good time. 
your throne if you are not alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. You're the only God whose name and praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything we can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. Oh, you are God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. If you take all the kings and the and the world leaders of this world, you put them all together, all of their authority, all of their power. God's got more power on the end of his pinky finger than any of them do, all combined together. Yes, the woman that had the issue of blood, if you talk to her, she'll tell you that he had more power on his coattail than the devil will ever have. My Lord, church, we got to remember who God is or how much power he really possesses. And we think about our situation and our circumstance. My God, he's got more power than anything we can imagine. He's got more authority. He said, I've been given all power, both in heaven and in earth. He's got the power to help you where you are with whatever you need tonight. Your situation may look 
impossible. It may look like something that you just can't get through. It may look like something that you just can't overcome. But I can tell you that God that we're singing about tonight, he's got the power to bring you through. He's got the ability to bring you out. He's got the authority to give you the victory. All you've got to do is remember that he is still on his throne. He hadn't left. He hadn't retired. He hadn't turned in the fire of the towel. He hadn't hung it up. He's still working. He's still moving. He's still God alone tonight. Woo! Shanda Mokata Mahaya. I said he's still God alone. Woo! devil tried to overtake his throne and he's still trying to do it today but he ain't never gonna touch that throne he's high and lifted up he's exalted above all gods he's exalted above Allah he's exalted above Buddha he's exalted above Muhammad I'm telling you he's still got the power out of my shot to my he's still got the authority he's still got the final say Woo! Stand with me. That's the one I serve. That's the one I live for. That's the one I worship. That's the one I pray to. That's the one that I walk with. The God that has all power tonight. Woo! Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for his presence in this house? My Lord, let him be God over your life tonight. And I promise you, he'll help you. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your presence is here, God. We thank you, Lord, that you're not dead, but you're surely alive. You're still working. You're still moving. You're still moving mountains. You're still parting Red Seas. You're still working the impossible. And God, we pray tonight that you would come down in this house and you would touch us again with that grace power that's able to help us to overcome any situation Lord let your presence be real let your will be done bless these offerings Lord in the remainder of this service in Jesus name we pray
what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Yours is the glory, yours is the name of all names. What a powerful name it is, what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, oh, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. See, death could not hold you, the veil tore before you. You silenced the most of sin and grace. And now the heavens are roaring with the praise of stand against what a powerful name it is the name of Jesus oh my God thank you Jesus hallelujah thank God
almost gave up. I was right at the edge of my breakthrough, but I couldn't see it. The devil thought he had me, but my Jesus came and grabbed me, and he held me close so I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me so I would let go. Oh, and now I'm here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me so I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me. So I would let go. Oh, now I'm here today because God kept me. And I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. So I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me. So I would let go. Oh, I almost, I almost let go. I felt like I just couldn't take life anymore. Oh, my problems, they had me bound. And depression weighed me down. But God held me close. So I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me. So I would let go. And now I'm here today because God kept me. And I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. So I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me. So I would let go. Oh, and now I'm here today because God kept me. Oh, and I'm alive today only because of His grace. Oh, He kept me. So I would let go. Oh, God's mercy kept me. So I would let go. I want us just to continue worshiping him and let's see what good thing the Lord will do for us tonight. Praise God. Aren't you glad that God is faithful? Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that God can keep us? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So great to be with you tonight. Appreciate the spirit and the power of God that we feel and just so glad for this revival and what the Lord has done already. We'll be in the book of Exodus, chapter number 17. <clears throat> I want to say we appreciate the fellowship today uh, over some, some great barbecue. We just enjoyed our time together with your pastor and his family and uh, just so glad for what God is doing in this hour. Amen. Thank you for responding to the Spirit of the Lord this morning. And... Uh, the Lord will work for us as he sees fit every single service this week. As much as we will obey him, as much as we will move with him, he will do what only he can do if we'll do what only we can do. I believe that. God's not going to force anything on the church, but he is ready to do whatever we'll allow him to do. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. What a joy to be with you. Praise God. Thanks for your giving, the accommodations. Everything's just been so great. Amen. Exodus chapter 17, and we'll start in verse number 8. Exodus chapter number 17, and verse number 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men, and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said unto him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. Have you ever been working for God, and you were doing something, and you were even, this literally just hit me, Pastor. You're in between tasks for God and your own hands. The hands that you grew up with, the hands that you have had attached to your body the entire time, the hands that you always use to work for God, even your own hands got heavy. Not even carrying a burden in my own hands. Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book. That's why we have it today. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Don't just write it down and put it somewhere. Talk about what God has done. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Amen. Lift your hands. Ask God to help us here in the service tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for the worship that we've had here tonight. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you would have your way in this service, have your way in this house. Lord, set a watch upon my mouth tonight. Let me speak as an oracle of God. Let me speak only what you would have me to say, Lord. I pray, Lord, that not one person would escape this sanctuary. Not one person would exit these doors without hearing from God. I believe you're going to do that tonight. Tonight, Lord, every person, every child in this sanctuary can hear from God before we leave. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for it. We give you thanks in advance. We glorify your holy name, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. I appreciate this gentleman walking in tonight during the service. Amen. My friend, you are welcome to be with us here tonight. Praise God. The Bible says that Amalek came and fought with Israel in a place called Rephidim. Rephidim means a resting place. It seemed as if the children of Israel should have been in a time of blessing, should have been in a time of rest, should have been in a location where they could, as it were, 
maybe not let their guard down, but at the very least, they should have been able to relax. But how many knows the moment that we start to relax, the Bible says that then came Amalek. Praise God. He came to the people of God. Now, they're, they're in this resting place. They're, they're kind of relaxed in a relaxed position. I don't know if Amalek caught them off guard, but immediately Moses begins to speak orders to Joshua, and he says, Amalek is come up. Amalek, it means a valley dweller, someone who lives in the valley. How many knows the devil wants to keep us in the valley? Now, I know I have learned some of my most valuable lessons in the darkest point in a cave, in the darkness, in the corner, under water it felt like, but in the valley, I have learned some of the most valuable lessons, tasted some of the sweetest victory, even sweeter than being on top of the mountain is the victory that comes in the middle of the valley. It's in the valley that you find the rose of Sharon. It's in the valley that you find the lily. It's in the valley that you find the cool streams of water that refresh your thirst and refresh your soul. But here comes the valley dweller. He's wanting to overtake the people of God who are in a resting place. And Moses begins to give orders and he says, Joshua, go choose some men. Put your hands on them, men that you can trust. Go out and fight with Amalek. And tomorrow, I'm going to raise up the rod of God in the sight of all the people and in the sight of Amalek. Aren't you glad that when God raises up the rod in the hand of the man of God, oh, I don't want to get ahead of myself tonight, but when the man of God has the rod, he's preaching the word, he's laying down the law as it were, he's giving us the words of God under the unction of God with the authority of God. How many knows we're going to win when the rod is in the air? I said we're going to win when the man is preaching in the book. God's people will always win when we're following after the word of God. The rod has been lifted and so they go up to the top of the hill and Moses held up his hands and when he held up his hands, Israel prevailed. That's why if we see a brother or a sister and it seems like they're struggling, go and help them lift up their hands. I can't tell you how many times I've prayed with people in an altar service and helped them hold up their hands. I don't know how many times, how many youth camps, how many camp meetings I'd wear out every preacher in the building seeking for the Holy Ghost, them holding up my hands. But how many knows if we can keep our hands up where God can see them, God will always bring the victory. I said God will will always bring the victory. He said when Moses held up his hand, Israel prevailed. But when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. And Moses' hands, they were heavy. And so they put a stone under him. Thank God when you're too tired to stand, you can sit on the rock. Hallelujah. I said when you're too tired to stand, God will give you a resting place. It's in Rephidim. They were fighting the devil. I said they were fighting the valley dweller. And he said, we'll just bring you a rock, give you a spot to sit down. But whatever happens, man of God, don't let down your hands. I said, don't let down your hands. Might not be able to stand, but don't let your hands go somewhere that God cannot see them. How many knows that every time that the church wins, God has a hand in it? Oh, hallelujah. Whether it's his hand or that hand or that hand or that hand, God's got a hand in it. Come on, somebody. God invests in people so that he might use them. 
And how many knows tonight that hands up, God wins. Hallelujah. In God's hands, we're in good hands. I want to share this with you. A preacher wrote this and shared it with me. He said, fold your hands and you will go to sleep. That's what I did this afternoon. That recliner over in that fellowship hall is comfortable. I'm telling you. It might not be a thousand dollar recliner. It might not have an electric push button that glides you back. It might have one of those handles on the sides. But I'm going to tell you something. That chair is comfortable. I found out last night, and it took me a while to get out of that chair to get in the bed so I could go to sleep. Amen. I took a nap this afternoon, about 30 minutes in that chair, put some music in. I put my phone down, and you know what I did? I folded my hands. How many knows the Bible says a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep? I hope you don't ever forget this message tonight. Fold your hands and you will go to sleep. Fill your hands and you'll be too busy to care for someone else. Fret with your hands and you'll lose your grip. Fight with your hands and you'll do too much damage but feel after God with your hands and God will fight for you. Hallelujah. How many knows there were times when God spoke to his people. He said, take up a sword and go fight. But then there were times he said, you close your mouth, you be still, you be silent, you do what I tell you to do, you hold your peace and the Lord shall fight for you. Sometimes God says, hands off and hands up. Hallelujah. How many like to say, right here on Sunday night during revival. Lord, I'm taking my hands off the problem and I'm going to raise them in worship. I want you to know something. When you keep your hands where God can see them, it keeps your hands off of the problem. I said it keeps your hands off of the problem. I know I want to fix it. I want to make it right. I know exactly what to say. I know what they need to hear. I know how to deal with it. I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. And God says, if you let down your hands, Amalek is going to win. If you let down your hands, the people are going to lose. He said, keep your hands where I can see them. Keep your hands where I can see them. When you keep your hands up, it keeps them off of the problem. trying to preach to you tonight keep your hands where God can see them keep your hands where God can see them not because he feels like we have ill intent that's that's what the police officer is going to say when he pulls up to your window I get pulled over it's been a while when I get pulled over I put my hands on that steering wheel, usually laced about like that, with my wallet right there. Yes, sir. Young people, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It'll get you a long way with some of them. Amen. Keeping my hands where God can see them, number one, keeps my hands off of the problem. Number two, It keeps my hands out of God's business. How many of us have ever, maybe point one and point two should go together. One one, one A and one B, how about that? Keep your hands where God can see them because if your hands are up, Your hands are off of the problem and your hands are out of God's business. How many of us, if we'll be honest, I'm going to tell you I have been there where I thought I knew what was right. I thought I could take care of it instead of allowing God to do it because I was impatient, because I wanted it done my way. I wanted my outcome. I was not saying thy kingdom come and thy will be done. I was going to say let my will be done. Let me 
have the outcome. I know what's good for them. They've got it coming. I know exactly what to say. And I know if I put my hands on it, it's going to get done right. Anybody ever been there? If you want something done right, Boy, that don't work in the kingdom of God, does it? I said, that don't work. It might work on the job. I built houses for about 10 years. I worked with some guys just as worthless as a two before laying in the grass. I'm telling you, if you want something done right, do it yourself. That might work when you're building a house for somebody to dwell in, but it don't work building the kingdom of God. I said, it don't work building the kingdom of God. If we want it done right. Lift up your hands. Get them out of God's business. Let God take care of it. Let God reward them. Let God fight for you. Let God work in the situation. Let God take over. I said let God take over and keep your hands where God can see them. that song they sang. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Somebody gets up and sings, give up and let Jesus take over. And the preacher gets up and preaches, don't give up. About like the choir singing on Sunday morning, I shall not be moved. And the pastor preaching on tithing. And somebody gets up and sings, Jesus paid it all. Are we okay tonight? They pre they sang, I held on. But how many know sometimes the best way to hold on is to let God have it? I'm not holding on to the problem. I'm not holding on to the person. I'm not holding on to the, 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 the mess that's going on. I'm holding on to my faith in God, knowing that without him, I'm not coming through this. How many of you can say, I held on, but what did I hold on to? Did I hold on to myself? Did I hold on to my pride? Did I hold on to my own understanding? Oh no, I held on to my faith. Anybody know how to hold on to faith? I said, does anybody know how to hold on to faith? Just like this. I said, just like this. Anybody know how to hold to the hand of God? Anybody know how to reach up to a reaching down hand? It's just like this. I say, oh God, tonight, let us keep our hands out of your business because when I keep my hands up, it keeps them out of the problem. It keeps them out of God's business, but it keeps my hands open for the blessing of the Lord. I said it keeps me in a position to receive the blessing and the help and the strength that only comes from God in a time where folks are throwing in the towel. I say don't throw in the towel. Throw up your hands. Don't throw in the towel. Throw up your hands. March around Jericho and don't you shout till God says to shout but when he says do it. When he says lift your hands. When he says lift the rod. When he says believe me then obey him and watch him work every time. Come on worship him. Worship him tonight. Woo! Woo! When have you ever put your hands on the problem and it came out right? Oh, you're meddling now, preacher. You don't know us like that. Oh, no, but the Holy Ghost does. I said the Holy Ghost does. How often have we put our hands on it and all it did was make a bigger problem? How many times have we put our mouth on it and all it did was make a bigger problem? I've been there, friend. I said, I've been there. I'm not a rookie tonight. I got a few scars myself. I said, I've got a few scars from ministry myself. Nothing to brag about. Nothing to boast about. I've been through the battle. I've been through the trial. I've been through the test. But every time that I found victory, it's because I had my hands where God could see them. I said it's because I had. I had my hands. 
times uh, where God could see them. Uh, I, I was in the right uh, position uh, for God to move on my behalf. I'm not going to preach much longer. Right here in our text, Joshua discomfited Hamalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. I wonder what the meeting minutes say for the Sorrento Church of God. Oh, oh, we're going deep tonight. I said, we're going deep tonight. I wonder what the minutes say in the meetings. I know where I'm at. I ain't afraid of none of you tonight. I wonder what the meeting, the minutes say. Well, we fought over this. Come on, somebody. Your pastor ain't told me much. I don't know what's going on in the past in this house, but the Holy Ghost does. I said, the Holy Ghost does. And you remember the times where you stood by God, you stood by the truth, and the truth stood by you. You lifted up the rod, and the rod didn't let you down. I said, write it for a memorial in the book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I remember him telling the Israelites, get a good look, boys. You see these Egyptians, you're going to see them no more forever after this day. And I say, oh God, I believe this church is at an intersection right now in this revival. And we're going to stay here until we move on. I say, God, move us beyond where we are tonight. And we never come back. I said, we never come back. We don't ever have to fight that battle again. But we'll rejoice because we left it in the hands of Almighty God. Can we have a little more of that song? About the fact that there's nobody else like him. You are God alone. Somebody needs to look at the devil and tell him, I'm not standing in my own power. I'm not standing on my own foundation. My foundation is not my last name. My foundation is not my denomination. My foundation is not the location or the name of this church. My foundation is nothing less than Jesus Christ, the solid rock. Somebody needs to write it down in a memorial book tonight and realize. He said, I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Does anybody know what Jehovah Nisi means in the Hebrew? It means God, my banner. I said, God, my banner. You hold Hold up the rod of God and God will hold up his banner for you. I said you stand by the word of God and God's banner will stand by you. And I remember reading in Isaiah 59 so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and the glory of the, from the rising of the sun and when the enemy shall come in like a flood but my hands are heavy. Hold them up anyway. Hold up the rod, Pastor. I said, hold up the rod. Keep preaching the book. Keep living the truth. Come on, church. We believe in holiness. We believe in a separated life. Keep holding up the rod. Keep holding up the standard. He said, when 
the enemy shall come in like a flood. Where does a flood start? It don't start on the mountain. It starts in the valley. It starts in Rephidim. It starts with the valley dweller. He said when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I say lift up your hands tonight. Give the fight to the Lord. He said, keep your hands where I can see them. Who's going to be first to step out? Who's going to be first to step out? He said, I'm tired, preacher. The devil has come by my way and said, let your hands down just a little bit. Let the rod down just a little bit. Let the rod down just a little bit, pastor. Let the standard down on that youth camp a little bit, Pastor. Let, let, just relax a little bit, Pastor. We're in a resting place. Relax a little bit, Pastor. Let some things relax. Come on, Sorrento Church of God. How about we just relax a little bit? I said, how about we relax a little bit? What do you think the devil's going to do? The first thing he sees when you relax... You're no longer tense. Your muscles are not in position to act at a moment's notice when your body commands them to. And you are not in a position to obey God in an instant when God commands you to. I say, I'm not going to relax. I'm going to lift up my hands where God can see them. I'm going to hold up the rod and God is going to lift up the standard in our defense. Come on, somebody. Come on, meet me in this altar tonight. Lift up your hands to God. They're going to sing and play. Come on, lift up your hands to God tonight. Come on, church. This is Sunday night of revival. Let God help us in this service tonight. Oh, hallelujah. He is God alone. Oh, hallelujah. And that's just the way it is. Hallelujah. As far as Sorrento Church of God is concerned, he's the only God. There are no other gods before him. And that's just the way it is. Come on, Amalek. That's just the way it is. On any mortal man, you are not a God in need of anything we can give by your plans. That's just the way it is. It's the plan of God. I said it's God God's plan, church. Hallelujah. Keep your hands where God you can see them. Keep your hands off the problem. Keep your hands out of God's you business. God and keep your hands open for the blessing and the victory. By your plan. Hallelujah. That's just the way it is. Oh, hallelujah. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. You are God alone. Hallelujah. Let God be God. And let the church be the church. That's just the way it is. You are God alone. From before time began. You are God alone. And right now, Hallelujah. in the good times and bad, it's in your hands, Lord. You are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. From before time began, you are on your throne. And you are God alone. You are God alone. You're the only God whose power none can contend. 
You're the only God whose name and praise will never end can give. You are God. That's just the way it is. You are God of You are on your throne. You are God alone. Unchangeable. Unshakable. Unstoppable. That's what you are. In the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You are God alone. You are not a God created. The time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times, you are unchangeable, unshakable, unstoppable. From before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone. Till we stand and live 
word you're fighting for us always fighting for us oh and you won't back down facing armies of you speak one word and they scatter around us you're fighting for us yes you are always fighting for us how great the love the glorious love of the Lord true Father how great the love the glorious love of the Lord true Father you won't hold back when it comes to your children you fiercely defend us Till we stand delivered, you're fighting for us, always fighting for us. Oh, and you won't back down facing armies of You just speak one word and they scatter. Oh, you're fighting for us. Yes, you are always fighting for us. you fiercely defend us till we stand delivered you're fighting for us always fighting for us oh and you won't back down facing armies of thousands you speak one word and they scatter around us you're fighting for us always fighting As we were praying, the Lord, y'all can keep playing, that's fine. The Lord quickened a verse to me, and I want to share it with you. I heard a man preach from this text. I'm just going to read this. I'm going to give it back to the pastor. The Lord prompted me to share it with you. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 25. How many of you know that's that's true, that he is, he is fighting for us? He is. He is. He is fighting for us. Whether we feel like it or not. Right. The spies, the two spies went to the city of Jericho. The people of God were afraid when they heard the evil report from the ten spies. They didn't even take time to listen to what the other two spies said, what Joshua and Caleb said. Rahab looked at Joshua and Caleb and said, listen, we've heard about your God. We've heard about you. We've heard that the armies have just 
fallen in your path. We have heard that he parted Red Sea. Has he parted a Red Sea for anybody? And you didn't even have to walk through the mud. Hallelujah. He's fighting for us. Isaiah 49, verse 25. Thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee I will contend with him that contendeth with thee and standing right down here the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said the next line is for somebody in this church He said, I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. Somebody needs to receive that tonight. I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will. I will save thy children. You have done everything you can to talk to them. You've done everything you can to plead with them. You've done everything you can in your power. I don't know who the Holy Ghost is talking to, but I know he's talking to somebody right now. The verse above this, it says, because of how mighty the cap because of how mighty the predator is, isn't the captive rightly so? Isn't he rightly so in captivity? It just seems like That's the way it's always going to be. But he said, I'll take away the captives from the mighty. I'll take away the prey from the terrible and I'll deliver them. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. And I will save thy children. Thank God. Not only can he save them, and bring them into the kingdom of God but he can save them from the hand of an enemy that wants to devour them oh I feel the Holy Ghost right now somebody needs to accept that word right there I will save thy children keep your hands off the problem keep your hands out of God's business And keep your hands open for God's blessing and God's victory. It's coming, church. I said it's coming. Come on, let's worship him. Let's worship him tonight. Never close your eyes. Though you've never been surprised. And whatever war may rise, know you're fighting for us. And you move with the holy rays in all your miraculous ways. We stand delivered, you're fighting for us, always fighting for us, oh, and you won't back down facing armies, you'll speak one word, and they'll scatter, oh, you're fighting for us, yes, you are. Children, you feel. 
fiercely defend us till we stand delivered. You're fighting for a million, my God is fighting for us. Oh, and you won't back down, facing armies a thousand. You speak one word and they'll scatter around us. You're fighting for us.
This is how I fight my battles. 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 It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Right now it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. But I'm surrounded. Oh, by devil, you. it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I know it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna sing a victory. I know I'm gonna sing a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. But it won't prosper In the war he wages, he will win So I'm not backing down from any giant Cause I know how this story ends Yes, I know how this story ends Victory. Yes, I'm gonna, gonna get my victory yeah. for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna sing a victory. I'm gonna sing a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. What the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good You turn it for good You take what the enemy meant for evil And you turn it for good Oh, you turn it for good You take what that enemy 
meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good Victory. Yes, I'm gonna see victory for my battle belong to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belong to you, Lord. Very few times does the Lord ever require your help, just your obedience. To be honest, God's been working for people longer than you've been alive. Sometimes your biggest enemy is yourself. Ain't even the devil. Yourself. Every one of us in this building faces what we think at times are impossible situations. And God's sitting there thinking to themselves, himself, nor am I, but they think that's impossible. Wow. You're talking about one that dried up a Red Sea and made the seabed dry and hard enough to walk on. You're talking about one that gave people bread out of heaven and caused the, the, the quail, the dove, to come and just land almost in their laps. That, that God looks at your situation and says, well, that ain't nothing. Your God made frogs come out of a river and overtake all of Egypt but left Israel alone. He made it so dark they were biting their tongues that Israel had daylight. He is unlimited. And if we would spend more time trusting him than doubting and fear, we'd walk in a different place. I'm facing things, you're facing things, we all know. We all know what's going on. We, we know the situation. We know what's in front of us, what we're dealing with, what we're praying for. We know. But what, what, am, I, what, kind of, what am I going to be able to do if I stay on the bottom looking at how impossible it is and how that I haven't heard anything and there's nothing? What, what is that going to do? It ain't going to do a thing but mess me up. And think of the blessings I might miss in the meantime. You know, I, I, don't, I don't say this in a... I don't say this in a negative way to paint her in a negative way, and she knows that, and I know that, and my wife knows that, Brother Ron knows that, but, but Sister Juanita said that Ron and Katie would never come to church here. She gave up on it. She never even gave it a chance. She said they won't come here. They'll go to, let's just pray they go in a church. I ain't praying for them to just go in a church. I'm praying for them to come here. What, they just won't live that. You don't know that. I'm not praying for them to go sit in some dead liberal church. I ain't even going to pray if I got to pray for that. Why in the world would I pray I'm halfway in? I'm not going to pray that. Oh, Brother Wilson, pray that my children just go to a church. No, this church. Amen. Not a church. This church. I just, I, I just don't believe they'll do it. I, I just don't believe they'll do it. Well, they didn't. At first. 
they looked all kind of other places, run up into a mess. And something brought them here. What was it? Prayer. And look, Chase is not right. Well, that's all right. Three-fourths of them are. Let's rejoice in what God's doing. He's just a young man. He's just a young man that just God's got to just get him. And God's going to get him. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt bad. It hurt the first time. I hate to see what come the second time. But God's going to get him. If Brother Bryce, if God would just let him wake up one morning and feel what he felt in that hospital, I believe he'd be in the altar by that night. If he wakes up and that, it's so hilarious, that the name of what he had, the Stephen Johnson sickness, that the name is hilarious because it's somebody that used to go to church here. Um, but if that got put on him, if he woke up feeling that, I believe by that night he'd be back in church because he wouldn't want that to come back on him again. God's able to let him feel just enough to get his attention, and he'll be on that altar. You're the one that thinks it's so impossible for God to move. You know God's been dealing with people longer than you've been alive. God knows how to get people's attention, even your loved ones. Well, I just don't think my children ever serve this. Well, what have you poured into them yet their whole life? Real, think about it for a minute. For you to make that statement says that you have absolutely poured nothing into your children their whole life. They'll, they'll never live this. They'll, they'll never come here. They might go to a church, but they'll never come here. What, what were you pouring in them? What in the world could you have possibly poured in your children to make them hate what we are so bad that they won't come here? Think about that. That's a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil. They won't come here. You don't know that. You're putting, you're putting your hands on it, and you're saying, I, I, God might save them, but he won't save them here because they'll never live this. Whew, let me tell you all something. Every time the Sunday school teacher would preach or say something about long hair, I'm telling you, I felt like it, it was growing longer right in front of her presence because I was going to keep growing it long. I, I, I was going to let my hair grow just as long. I was going to be the topic of every message they preached at that church. I never felt bad when they preached on that long hair. I'd sit there and just sling it in church just to rile them up a little bit more. I was so full of rebellion. But I'm telling you, when God had enough, he got my attention. And I listened. And I prayed through. And I went that Monday and got it all taken off. You know, it, it can happen like that. You're the one that's so full of doubt. It ain't God. God ain't doubting none of it. God knows what he's got. He knows the day it's going to happen. It's already, God, God's got this thing mapped out. He's having to work on you probably more than he's having to work on them. Well, if I save them on this Sunday, I see they've, they've just been depressed all day long Friday and Saturday. If I, if I do get them to the altar on Sunday, they won't even be equipped to go pray for their own youngin. Wouldn't it be awful if you were the hindrance? Think about it for a minute. You just, you, you got to shake that off. You, I'm telling you, we got to shake it off. We all been in this long enough that we've seen God move. How many of you, raise your hand and be honest, I've never seen God move in my whole life. Now, you know good and well you've seen God move. And you've seen God move a many a time. And the same God that did it back then is going to do it again. You have got to stay full yourself. Oh, we're all going to get weak at times and frustrated, but you got to shake that off when you get to church and say, okay, God, it might be today, and i got to make sure I'm ready to help. You know, well, Brother Wilson, when they come in, you just be ready to pray them through because I can't be guaranteed that I'm going to be in shape to pray them through or not. I'm reminded of a woman in the Bible who was a widow who had two sons that were about to be sold into slavery. And if she had acted like that, they would both be slaves. They'd have died slaves. If, she, if she'd have took that kind of attitude and said, oh, what's the point? Well, they're coming to get them tomorrow. What, what's the point? She didn't. She done what a normal mother does. She got desperate. And she got to where the man of God was at. And she told him her situation. Isn't it amazing that it, we don't read that 27 widows made it over there, 30 or 50 or 80. It just talks about one. Ladies, gentlemen, 
be that one that's willing to do whatever it takes to get your young and saved. Be willing. If you've got to go beg the man of God for a miracle, be willing to go get in the altar and beg God. If you've got to be Hannah, be willing to go be Hannah. If you've got to be that widow, go be willing to be that widow and break down and be vulnerable and weep and cry and ugly cry and every other kind of cry that there is out there. And say, God, I really need you to save somebody. That woman didn't give up, and look what God done for her. If God will do it for her, he'll do it for you. If God had did it for the widow of Zarephath, when her and her son were going to eat a cake and die, and God made a way and it didn't run out the whole time, God will do it for you. If God moved for these people, these stories were written to give you faith to believe that the same God that did it for them is the same God that will do it for you. If you will shake off the doubt and the negativity and the woe is me and I'm pitiful and I can't pray a prayer and I can't get through, if you would shake that junk off and rise up in the power of the Holy Holy Ghost, it could be in this revival your entire family turns around. But not if you're laying over there like something pitiful. Now, I mean, God can't bring them in if you're on the bottom. Well, if God brought your child in and they were lost and you're on the bottom, they're going to have to have you and them side by side. They're going to pray you through and then lean over and pray for you youngin. That ain't, that, ain't, that ain't parental love. That's not where it's at. It's like, God, I got to do whatever I got to do to see these children saved. I, forget me. Forget me time and all this other stuff. God, I've got to do what I got to do to see these children saved. Ain't that how you believe it tonight? Stand with us tonight. We love you. We're thankful for this family. Amen. I can hear some of you saying, oh, Lord, please help him to hush and land this plane where we can go. Amen. We can go hurry and sit and eat at the place. <sighs> the only place available, apparently. Amen. But God's good to us. I'm telling you, we do not have to be people that lay on the bottom all the time. I, I, I told my children this Wednesday night, and, and I don't care if you laugh about it. I don't care if you think it's selfish. I don't care what you say. I said, when, when I got to church Wednesday night, I was determined that I was taking over that service. Because if y'all sung the right song, I was going to the altar and praying because I needed God. And I really didn't care if anybody else needed it, wanted it, or desired it, or even had a, 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 a desire to see God do anything. If y'all sung the right song, I knew that I was going to go to the altar because I was carrying so much. I, I felt like I was about to lose my mind, and I knew that I did not have to live that way. So when they got to singing and God got to moving, guess what I did? Well, I just took over. I come right here, and I got down and prayed until I felt better. And I feel good now. It's okay to take it over if you want to get help. You say, well, I never thought about it like that. I know. But when you got to have help, you got to have help, and you just don't care. Honestly, they probably could have sung Blessed Assurance, and I still went to the altar, but I'm glad they didn't. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you tonight. God, you're so good to us. God, I know you're working. God, even right now, God, it's like you can just feel heaven moving out from the church and moving towards the things that we've been praying for. God, I feel it. I feel it in the depths of, of, who, of what we are. Oh, God, even what you started back in January and February, God, it feels like we've just jumped right back in where that was and kept seeking and pulling and searching. Uh, oh, God, I pray that you would save our families. And God, if ever if there's anybody here that all of their families are saved, give them a burden for other people's families. Uh, this is not a time to be sitting back and doing nothing, but press with all that we've got. Let us take heed to what we've heard this night. Keep our hands in the air. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen.